Today we're going to be working on a cayenne spicy fried chicken. We're going to be serving that with a honey and apple cider glaze and a really cool crisp cucumber salad. Don't worry about keeping track of these recipes as we go. I'll upload all of your recipes, step-by-step instructions, all when we get these videos posted. So thanks for joining us again and uh, let's get cooking. So again, just to kind of review what we've got here, we've got our whole chicken. We broke it down into uh, 10 pieces. We've got our breast meat and our leg, thigh, and chicken wings here. It's already gone through about an eight hour brine. Our brine included fresh lemon, rosemary, parsley, a little bit of black peppercorn, sugar, and salt. And for our breading today, we're just gonna use an all-purpose flour, buttermilk, and a selection of spices. Uh, we're gonna be doing a garlic powder, salt, pepper, um, cayenne, and a little bit of smoked paprika. So for our breading, we're just gonna jump in here. We've got our three cups of all-purpose flour. Add to that our smoked paprika, the good tablespoon of cayenne pepper, garlic powder, and of course some salt and pepper. Now when you take this recipe home, this is where you can really have some fun with it. If you've got a, a Creole seasoning that you really like, you want more spice, kick up that cayenne a little bit, this is where you can really have some fun with this recipe and tailor it to, to your taste buds. So you'll notice that I'm whisking these spices together in flour. I want to make sure that everything gets fully incorporated. You don't have any clumps of uh, cayenne in there that are going to get too spicy for anybody. I'm just going to set these things aside. And when we go to breading, you want to make sure that you use a dry hand and a wet hand as much as you can. Otherwise, you're going to end up with tons of breading on your fingers. So we're just going to get started here. Get all of our chicken in. And this is now going to be my wet hand. Cover these up with a little bit of flour. Nice even coating on over everything. Gently lay these into our buttermilk. You want to make sure that you're keeping that skin attached to the, to the chicken as best you can because that's really the best part of fried chicken is your crispy skin. So as, the more you beat this up, the, the more you're going to deal with uh, some inconsistent frying. So we've got our, our chicken breast in the buttermilk. We're just gonna make sure that those are fully submerged, nice even coating on there. Then they actually go back into the flour. And that's what's gonna give you that crispy, classic crust for your fried chicken. So just get these in there. Again, wet hand, dry hand. Make sure we get a nice even coat. Maybe even give it a little press. Make sure you've got a nice even seasoning around everything. Just gonna set these aside on our parchment paper here. And we'll do this for uh, the rest of the chicken. So as you can see, we've got all of our chicken uh, breaded, ready to go. Uh, we've actually let this sit on the counter for about an hour. It, uh, what that does is temper the chicken so it's not too cold uh, when it's going into the oil. That way you can control the heat of the oil a little bit better. Also gives you a little bit of time to make that honey glaze and that cucumber salad while we're getting this chicken just to its final stages. So next up, we'll, I'll meet you at the stove. So you can see we've got our oil sitting at right around 320 degrees. That's where you want to get it started for your, your dark meat pieces. A um, couple pieces to be aware of here. Number one, add your chicken in nice and slow. Number two, make sure you keep an eye on that temperature. You don't want to go too hot. And you definitely don't want to make sure that that oil gets too cool during this frying process. So we're just going to keep that thermometer in there. Give it just a few seconds to recover back up to that 320 degrees. And these dark meat pieces, once they get flipped, will take about 12 or 15 minutes total. So we're about uh, 12 minutes in on these first few pieces. They've been flipped over once. We're just going to pull them right out of the oil and set them on our roasting rack here. Again, be careful not to drop that back in there. Got a beautiful crust, nice, rich, deep color. And while we're starting our next batch, we're just gonna put our thermometer in just to double check this temperature. Of course, you wanna get your chicken up to 165 degrees. Keep in mind, it'll carry over a little bit. So 162, and it'll carry all the way up to 165 for you. Make sure it's nice and safe. And we'll get our next batches going. All right, we've got our last batch coming out of the oil right now. 
It's got that beautiful dark color. I don't know if you can hear that. It's just crackling, crispy, nice crust on top of everything. Go ahead and, ahead and turn that uh, oil off and let that cool down just a little bit. We're going to fry this rosemary up for our garnish. So be really careful with this step. Rosemary can have a lot of water in it and it may get a little spattering and splashing if you're not too careful. God, that smells amazing. All right, guys, we're just gonna get this onto our, our family platter here. Again, that beautiful fried chicken. The rosemary's nice and crispy. What I noticed too is when frying that rosemary, the whole, the whole house now smells like rosemary versus you know fried chicken, which is an even better aroma. We're just gonna crackle some of that crispy rosemary right over the top. A few sprigs. A little bit of parsley. That citrus, oh sorry, the honey glaze. A little bit of cayenne, apple cider vinegar in there. And a little touch of salt. All right, great work everybody. I know that that's a ton of work. Hopefully we made it a little more simple for you to get through this at home. Uh, now all you have left is to dig in and enjoy, uh, you know, like I said, a local beer. Today I'm going with a Woodford New Ridge Lager. It's great to pair with a rich chicken dish like this because it'll help cut through some of that, uh, that fried food flavor. So again, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to, if you have any questions, shoot them down in the comments. Let me know if I can do anything for you to help. Thanks again. Take care.